What's up everyone? Hope everybody's doing well. Today we're gonna go over the editing stack for editing 360 pictures and make sure that they look really, really good. Now when I first started, I found that there's a lot of information out there. I'm gonna try and condense this as much as I can into very simple steps. We're not gonna cover the virtual tour side of things today because I think that can be a separate video about why I chose the software that I'm using. So the stack that I'm gonna be using is mostly in Adobe. We're gonna be using Lightroom, we're gonna be using Photoshop, and then we're gonna use a couple other software to denoise their pictures and then actually also scale them up. And uh, I think that the results are really good. So let's dive in. All right, so first thing we do is we plug the SD card in and then we get our pictures. Now, depending on the, on the 360 camera that you own, you're gonna have a uh, different software. I happen to get one uh, R into 360 one R. So that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna drag all of my DNG files and that's what you wanna edit with. You don't wanna edit with these JPEGs that it makes for you uh, because you're not gonna be able to really uh, be able to modify it too much. So you wanna make sure that you are using the DNG files in our case or just raw files because they have the most information and that's gonna give us the best quality picture. So once you're ready, drag that in there and amazing. So I was shooting in bracketing mode, which means that it takes a certain amount of pictures and certain levels of exposure. So in this case, I took two. One of them I had to retake because I noticed this seam line here. So I moved the camera around and uh, it turned out better. Although my face looks weird, but it's okay. Yeah, so once you're here, we're gonna export this or you can batch export if you have multiple pictures. Um, we don't need to have all of the exposure photos uh, for this one, but if you wanted to, you can export all of the exposures. So if it's five pictures, it's gonna have five different exposures, one in the middle, and then... Anyway, we're gonna keep it simple. So export all the exposure photos. Uh, we don't need that, so uncheck. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna have one raw file and sure we're gonna save it to the desktop. That takes, that takes some time. All right, so while we're waiting for this thing to export, it just did, amazing. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom. Now, depending on how you like, what would you like more? You can use the Adobe Lightroom, which is kind of the cloud version. I like to use Adobe Classic, like the layout more. Nice, we're gonna go over to library and we're gonna just, Find our picture and drop it in here. It's gonna be the fastest way. Uh, usually what I do is I just, um, I look for the picture in that little browser there. Okay, amazing, I'm gonna export it, import it rather into Lightroom. Great, so now we can work on this. All right, so we're going to develop. The picture comes in a little bit dark and you know, we gotta adjust the white balance a tiny bit. So first thing I do is I use this tool right here, pick kind of like this nice kind of neutral color, if I can find one and make sure that it works this kind of looks yeah this looks this looks good this looks good and uh, from here you can keep on going and adjusting things um, if you just kind of select uh, if you just do auto it will adjust everything for you this looks okay I probably bump up the exposure a tiny bit and maybe a little bit more shadows make it nice and bright Reduce the highlights and just bump that up a little bit more and give it give it a little bit more contrast. Uh, at this point, I'm done here and uh, I'm gonna export this as a JPEG. If you, actually before I do that, if you kind of zoom in up here, you'll be able to see this sort of noise. Uh, and that's because of, you know, we kind of pumped the exposure up a little bit and there's a bunch of light which, uh, which gives us this noise and it looks, okay you know if you zoom out it looks fine but if you are zooming in which is what people do in virtual in virtual tours um it looks it looks bad and uh that's not something we want so that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna take this and export as a jpeg um yeah full quality and uh export gonna open up a software called Topaz Dino's AI. This software does is really cool and I'll show you in a second. You're gonna see that the noise over here has gone significantly down, but it does look a little bit cartoonish, which means that, you know, we've lost quite a bit of sharpness basically. So again, I like to use 20 and 20-ish and I found that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks nice. Kind of, if you look at the pole, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Yeah, okay, so at this point, if we had more photos, we can just kind of check all and apply this to all of them. And usually that works fine, especially if it's in the same room. I'm gonna go ahead and export that. Usually this takes not too long, so usually I kind of browse my phone or do something else. 
uh, for a few seconds. Once that's done, we're gonna import that into Photoshop and we're gonna remove the, the, the tripod legs that you get. And I like doing that because it gives it, to, it gives it that extra finish to the actual tour. So you're gonna open Photoshop and we're gonna open up a picture that has the tripod legs. This picture that we were looking at actually does not have it. I've already taken this through Lightroom and then took it to Denoise AI. And now we gotta remove that blue stuff you see here, which is the tripod legs or monopod legs rather. So we're gonna click on 3D, spherical panorama and new panorama layer from selected layers. And that will allow us to browse the picture in 360. Nice, so it looks kind of bad when you do this, but when you once you export it, it looks, it looks fine. All right, so we have this guy right there and let's zoom in a little bit. And what you're gonna do is hit a J and that will open up a spot healing brush. And all you gotta do is just go over this and most of the time it works really well. In this case, work well, let's clear up that mess as well. Nice, so at this point we're done. You know, this kind of looks like somebody just shot it in midair somehow and removed all the people that were in. Anyway, once we're done here, we're gonna go against spherical panorama and then we're gonna go and export panorama. And that we will call test, let's say. Now, if you drag this picture right now, it will look pretty bad. <laughs> so what you wanna do is take it into a software called Gigapixel AI. Basically it uses some crazy voodoo science. What it does, it increases the density of the pixels in your pictures. So if you go over and you drag that picture that we made. Cool, so now what you get is a preview and if I hit update, you'll see kind of things are becoming a little bit more in focus almost. So you click on update and maybe it's hard to see, but like this car in general just looks a little bit smoother. Now you'll notice that like small things like that license plate become smoother, but still hard to read, which is fine for us because we don't want to see that anyway. But if you compare them, uh, you compare the left and the right, you'll notice that it's much nicer. And then you can obviously go, you can you can go insane on this. You can you can do two x, four x, six x, or you know just define how many how much density you want to bring out. But for our purposes, two x is just fine. And this makes pretty big images anyway. You can prefix your file name over there and uh, export. In this stage, this takes a long time, especially for an entire virtual tour. So instead of waiting for all this stuff to export and then start working, what we can do is take all of those denoise, denoise pictures that we took and we start doing our virtual tour. And then after the Gigapixel AI is done, we'll be able to replace all those pictures with better ones basically. And that will save us a lot of time because this sometimes takes up to like two hours. Usually I just leave this overnight and come back in the morning and just replace those pictures and then hit upload. Let's take a second to talk about why I chose this stack. So after doing a lot of research online, watching a bunch of YouTube videos, trying out a bunch of different software, I came into this stack. This works really well. You start in Lightroom, you're just, you're just the color, you're just the white balance, you're just exposure, whatever it is, and you make it look good just like you would any other picture then you take that into denoise ai to remove all of that noise that happens because of the of the light in the room or whatnot because these 360 cameras just that's just a limitation that they have once you're done with that we're going to go into photoshop or any other software that can do what photoshop does and we're going to spot heal the tripod or mono, monopod legs and that will give our pictures an extra level of finish that you know most other people don't do once we're done we're going to export that jpeg and we're going to take it into gigapixel ai which will increase the density in our picture by two and i found that that works fine because i've overtried times four times six and a that takes a long time and b doesn't add that much detail into the picture and actually just makes it huge times two is fine just use that and yeah, so while Gigapixel AI is working and chugging away at those pixels, we're gonna start editing our tour in whatever virtual tour software that you wanna use. So yeah, that was it. I think that was pretty easy. And once you get comfortable with it, it takes maybe 10 to 20 minutes to do all of this stuff, and no matter how many photos you have. And most of the time, you're just waiting for Gigapixel AI to do its thing. And I know that there's plenty of software out there that maybe cost more, cost less, do things a little bit differently, but this is what I found works for me. And I think that most people can just dive into the stack and workflow and just start there without kind of reinventing the wheel, which is what I found I'm doing because I had to try quite a few different software before I arrived in the solution. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be covering the virtual tour software I'm using next. And hit that like button if this video helps you and drop a comment if you have any questions. Until next time, I'm Felix.